All right. So I want to thank you guys for being here tonight. Uh, we are recording this, so feel free to jump in. This is participatory. Uh, I wanted to have a chance to really kind of walk you guys through my experience at Recharge and really share with you some of the uh, some of the nuggets and the takeaways that we had. Um, now, Recharge and uh, Recharge is a uh, is a very high level leadership event. There's about 200 tickets that are available each year to go to this event. Uh, it, we have Chris Heller, we have John Davis. We have Mo Anderson and, of course, Diana Kokoska, the head of MAPS Coaching, uh, who's there to really kind of pour into us as leaders. And uh, what I wanted to do is have a chance to bring that material back so that we could enhance your businesses and, and give you some, some nuggets and some thinking and some energy around the things that you're doing. Um, Recharge is also a fascinating experience in that uh, we get to do some things that you don't always get a chance to do. Two years ago, we got to run on uh, Seahawks Stadium and uh, kick field goals and have dinner with uh, with one of their quarterbacks. Uh, last year we uh, we got to go to Fenway Park and uh, we went down to the to the to the uh, to the lower level and and uh, went to the batting cages and had a had a dinner with uh, one of their one of their head pitchers one of their lead pitchers. Um, this year we got to drive Porsches <laughs> at over 100 miles an hour around a racetrack and uh, after about nine laps of that I tell you. My adrenaline was pumping, and that was quite the experience. It's definitely something if you're in the Atlanta region, you wanna you wanna go down and have a chance to to see. So, one of the first speakers that we had was Valerie Borland, and she's the director of customer service for Ritz Carlton. And of course, if you guys know the Ritz Carlton brand, they have a concept of their gold standard. The gold standard is just their their belief system and how they deliver service to clients. This was a great opportunity to to really understand. How do we provide gold standard service, that, that amazing level of service to our people? So they talked about creating a service excellence culture and what are we doing in our businesses to create that service excellence? Their credo or the, the sort of the perspective that they have is they said, we're nothing more than ladies and gentlemen serving ladies and gentlemen. And that's their attitude that they had on, on everything that they do. To practice excellence, first on each other, and then practice on your customers, okay? So the, very much like, uh, very much like um, we practice at Power Hour, and we practice in your, in your um, scripts and dialogues practice in bold, we wanna practice on each other first, and then practice on the customer uh, when it counts. So that was uh, interesting parallels there. Um, they talked about that when you're, when you're growing your team and you're growing your organization, it all starts with the right person. It's our people who breed life into our brand. And that kind of made me wonder, uh, how are we breeding life into the brand that we have in our own businesses and how we interact with our clients? Where is there an opportunity to, to breed life into that? And she went on to say, someone is loyal only because a person brought a brand to life. So someone's only loyal to the brand. So in, uh, you know, in Crystal, uh, Crystal, I saw you're on the line. Crystal's case, Cr Crystal's customers are loyal to her because of how she breeds life into her brand, into her, into her service standard that she brings. Thought that was, thought that was a great takeaway. Um, we did have a fascinating conversation, on, uh, Jen, on the millennial generation, Jen Y, and just really kind of some, some perspectives on that. And I'll be, I'll probably share some of those on a different call. There's a lot of material. That we could cover on that. Um, and as we go through this, I do want to share with you guys, feel free to jump in if you have questions. I've got a couple of you guys muted just because I was getting a little background noise, uh, but uh, don't hesitate to unmute yourself or, or sh say, say something and we can unmute you. So probably the biggest takeaways, and I want to walk you through um, uh, John Addison. John is the, is, the, um, is the executive director of Success Magazine and has had an amazing uh, history started with the A.O. Williams company under Art Williams. So he's been in the insurance industry. They had some amazing perspectives on leadership and life. And I just kind of want to walk through those with you. John talked about the fact that leadership is the scarcest resource in the world. He said real leaders are team builders and they're building a team to be able to do something special every day. So as you guys are looking at your business and casting a vision, you know, ask yourself, where is your opportunity to build your team and who do you have to become so that you can uh, lead the people who you need in your organization to be able to fulfill the vision for your business? Becomes an interesting question. 
John said real leaders are unifiers, they're not dividers. Uh, they make things better and he defined, he defined leaders as human Alka-Seltzer. Love that, love that nugget. Uh, John said leadership is a, is a position, it's not a disposition, it's about making others feel good. And so where do we have the opportunity in our businesses and in our world around us to be that 360 degree leader that we can make other people feel well, feel good? I chuckled John's uh, definition of a boss. He says that's double S-O-B spelled backwards. <laughs> um, all right, so John went into nine leadership principles. And I, I kind of want to run through these. And if you guys are able to take some notes, you may want to take some notes on these. Uh, John said, first and foremost, these are the nine leadership lessons he's taken over, over his, his life and business and, and things that he's decided lead to success. John said, first decide who you are. Number two, he says, shine your light on others. Number three, he says, build on your strengths. Four, earn your position. Five, focus on what you can control, recognizing you can't control it all. So focus on what you can control. And number six, develop a peaceful core. Find that place where you can, you can find peace, inner peace and strength when you're, when you're, when you're in those rough times. Um, number seven, he says, be a lighthouse. Number eight, don't burn bridges. And number nine, make your parents proud. I thought that was a pretty funny one. Um, so as he developed these concepts, he kind of talked about this from the perspective of, First of all, deciding who you are means the, the, the most important person for you to lead is you. And of course, as we talk about leadership and we, we teach the quantum leap concepts, so many times the students in the class, when we ask them, what does leadership mean? They always say it's telling someone else what to do. And of course, leadership really starts with being able to have control over our thinking and our actions and leading ourselves first and using great systems and models to achieve the things that we want to achieve. Okay. Strength is granted to us all when we're called to a great cause. And, you know, this made me think about the fact that our businesses are calling us and our businesses, our ability to fund our family and our future, that is a great cause. And that's where the strength comes from within us. He says, you don't get a do-over. This is your life. Most people never decide who they truly are. This is about developing your own mission and your vision and your values and your perspectives and your principles and deciding who are you and what are you going to represent? Uh, we talk about, uh, are you gonna to happen to the world or is the world gonna to happen to you? The word decide is an interesting word. It, it, it's like homicide or suicide. It means to kill something and it means to cut off all other options. And so when you decide, you decide what's important, what will you stand for, and will you be a student of yourself? Will you truly understand yourself in a way that, that helps you to understand what drives you and where are your blind spots and what holds you back and what fears are there to overcome? So being a student of yourself, and I thought, I thought a lot about this as, as John developed this talking point. Um, obviously, the Productivity Coaching Program is all about taking a stand for your greatness and helping you to achieve and helping you to decide and, and understand and discover what is it that you want from your business. John talked about your brain being, uh, he said, garbage in, garbage out is what people talk about, and yet he said it's really garbage in, garbage stays. Um, developed this concept, he, he told a story about a little boy and his dad, and they went out and planted a garden. And they planted the garden, and they put all their vegetables in, and, and, in very nice, even rows, and they watered it. And when the little boy came back out to the garden the next time, there were weeds everywhere. And he looked at his dad, and he said, Dad, I'm so confused. We didn't plant all these weeds. And the point that we were making on this is that it's easier to grow weeds in your mind than it is flowers and trees, just like it is in the garden. The weeds kind of sprout up everywhere. And so you really have to focus on your thinking and make sure that you weed your brain every day. Make sure that you go in and cultivate and make sure all the weeds are gone and the stinking thinking is, is, uh, is, is, is not taking root in your everyday activities and we get sometimes we get caught in those stories that we tell ourselves and we continue um, one of the questions John encouraged us to ask is who do you give the keys to your brain to 
who, who, who gets the opportunity to speak into you and who are you surrounding yourself with? And are they planting seeds or are they planting trees in, in your mind? Um, his credo that he talked about was get out of bed, show up and get better every day. I love that one. He said, be a person of self, uh, be a personal self improvement movement. The only way to coast is to go downhill and attack every day as a goal getter and a goal setter. The only way to coast is downhill. I love that. Number two, he said, shine your light on others. He said, make others feel important. And he talks about the fact that uh, people, when you meet them, in fact, Diana Kokoska told a story about her, uh, her dad asking her uh, when she was a little girl, and I think she was eight or nine, he said, the dad said, hey, um, Diana, every person has a sign around their neck and, and I want you to, I want it's your mission to figure out what is that, you know, what does the sign say? And Diana said, well, dad, why won't you just tell me? And uh, Diana shared a very personal story where then she came back and she said, dad, I figured it out. Uh, the sign around their neck is supposed to read, make me feel special. And John really echoed that sentiment of make me feel better, make me feel special. And everyone has that flashing light on them saying, Make me feel special. Make me feel important. Um, practice learning to compliment. Have an attitude of gratitude every day and wake up every, every day in a space where you're grateful for the things around you and focused on the positive. John talked about shining your light on others, and he says, shine your light on others and the light will shine back on you. What you sow, you shall reap. Um, if you don't get enough credit, don't worry keep planting seeds and keep inspiring others. And shining your light on others is really being able to, to, to see others as, as greater than they are, currently are and being able to, to speak greatness into them to help them achieve the things that are possible in their life. Building on your strengths. He says most spend their entire lives working on their, on their weaknesses. And John really encouraged people in the audience to really focus on their strengths. And we certainly want to find that in, in the PC program with you. And we want you to, to Identify the things that you're really passionate about and focus your efforts there. Don't, don't, you know, we don't want to assume that we're just not good at something because we haven't tried and we haven't focused on it. And yet over time, there are just things that we gravitate to naturally that may be our strength zone. So let's focus on what we do well and focus on getting better there instead of trying to improve something that we're already not good at. Most, uh, he said, uh, uh, you're either green and growing or you're ripe and rotting. So go get better every day. Spend time on what you can influence. And the only things that you can influence are your attitude and your activity. So I want you guys to think about that for a moment. The only two things that we can control is our actions that we take and our thoughts that we think. We really have no control over anything else. So the ability to stand in the space and not, not try to control the things that we can't control um, that's a pretty good place to be. So how are we doing so far? Talk to me real quick. What ahas have you gotten so far? Um, this is Crystal. Yeah. My aha is um, focusing on my strengths and not my weaknesses. So right now that's currently what I'm, I focus more on trying to make myself better in the things that I noticed that I may not be good at. And I've kind of, I don't even really focus or even think about what I am good at. So that was an aha for me. That's a great aha. And, you know, I tell you, it's, it's, it, we're, we're programmed. Society around us is programmed to teach us that we have to be good at all things. And Gary, of course, says that your life gets big when you go small. And it's, you know, when, when, when we're kids in school and we come home with a report card and we have an A and two or three B's and a D, uh, what, what is it that everyone says they want us to focus on? Well, what's, why are we getting a D in that subject? Well, I think the, if we were really focusing on people's strengths, we'd be able to say, what is it that leads this, this individual to get an A in this area uh, not, and not focus on the D? So that's a great aha there. Um, I see Heather just joined us, so welcome, Heather. Uh, real quick, other check-ins, any other ahas that, you gotten, that you've gotten so far? Hey, Brian, it's Jess. Yeah. Um, you know, I, one of the things that's been sticking with me quite a bit, and I, you know, I think we've talked about it at Bold, is, 
you know that number one leadership lesson um, decide who you are and really that word decide I've never you know you think about you make a decision on an everyday basis whether you use vanilla or chocolate or you know you go right or left but really it, it, it truly is you're cutting off all other options and you know thinking about it in in respect of that you know homicide suicide it's a decide it's a side so um, you know, I, I, that's one that I've been carrying with me, <clears throat> excuse me, that's the one I've been carrying with me for, uh, for quite a while now. And I really, yeah, you know, when you decide what it, it's interesting, because when you get really clear in your own personal mission, uh, it, you know, what you want your life to look like in the end, your values, the rules you follow, the beliefs, the, the, the things that you won't violate, your perspective, how it's going to look along the way, what you end up with is a, is a decision-making matrix that you can use to make decisions in alignment with what you want out of your life. Because the bottom line is, is uh, we, we can't know it all, we can't have it all, we can't do it all. And so we have to decide what is it that we have to know and what is it that we have to do, do uh, and what is it that we want to have that leads us to our life by design. That's a great aha, I love that. Okay, so I will keep going. Uh, so, so John was talking about building on your strengths. He said, of course, you're either green and growing or you're ripe and rotting. Um, I love he talked about, John talked about work, working and the concept of working. And he, and he said, working isn't busy work. That work is only something that physically brings you a paycheck every day. And so if it doesn't bring you a paycheck in, uh, he says, you're not working. So any day that we as agents, if we're not lead generating, if we're not negotiating a contract, uh, those are days we're not working. And I thought that was a great aha to bring back to you guys because I love that perspective. Um, most people have a focus of an octopus on roller skates. So if you can picture an octopus on roller skates, that's what most people's focus looks like. And in fact, when we talked about the, the millennial generation, and sometimes we're careful not to, I want to stereotype anything, we talked about the millennial generation specifically as being a, a generation that had a focus that was like a flood. It was a, it was a hundred miles wide and a half an inch deep as opposed to being a river, which was, you know, a uh, uh, hundred feet wide and 10 feet deep and all moving in one direction. And so uh, let's make sure that we're not an octopus on roller skates and we really get clear in our focus. And that goes right back to the MVVBP we were talking about. The sixth principle, he said, was develop a peaceful core. And a peaceful mind generates a powerful inner being. We all have our issues and our challenges and our things um, that we don't want other people to know about. And we have to find a place that we can go to find that peaceful soul, that place that, that we can re relax and retreat into and recharge and refresh. And for some of us, we need more of that and others need less. So where's your peaceful place that, go, that you go to uh, that provides you that peaceful core? If you're waiting for circumstances to get you happy, you'll never be happy. And he talked about the fact that happiness is an internal decision that you make. No one will make you happy. Money won't make you happy. Uh, in fact, money will simply reveal more of what you already are. Uh, it, it will reveal you. So if you're a giver, money will reveal you to be a giver. If you are a hoarder <laughs> um, or uh, a Scrooge, it will just simply reveal you to be a Scrooge. So make sure you're you're not uh, make sure you're careful about what you're pinning your uh, you know what what you're using as your source of happiness. He said if you if you have the moment where you think, hey, I'm not happy, like I, I'm just not happy today, he goes fool yourself, just put on a smile and train yourself to be happy. Um, control your thinking if you're Thinking is stinking, your business is sinking. If your thinking is stinking, your business is stinking. So again, it goes back to that concept that the only thing that we can control is our thoughts uh, and our actions. And outside of that, that's, that's all we have control over. Um, John encouraged us to lighten up. He said, enjoy life, have fun, and put the fun back into fundamentals. He talked about just making every day a game and getting up, not feeling like it's work, and just going out into the world and enjoying what we do. I think that's a great perspective. Number seven on the leadership lessons was be a lighthouse. Um, this was an interesting concept. We talked about the fact that lighthouses aren't needed on a beautiful sunny day. Lighthouses are only needed when there is a storm. And so where do you have the opportunity to be a lighthouse 
for um, for um, someone else. So where do you have the opportunity to be a lighthouse for someone else? And where do you have the, um, I'm sorry, I just got a message on my screen there. Where do you have the opportunity to be a lighthouse for someone else? Um, success is never final. Failure is never fatal. Okay. In the end, it's the courage to continue that matters. So where do we have to find the courage to dig deep and continue? Be a lighthouse, not a weather vane. Don't just reflect what's going on around you. Be a beacon that guides you and others. Life is a marathon, not a sprint. Success and winning is, however, a marathon. John talks about the fact that world need, the world needs leaders. And he said an army of sheep led by a lion is more feared than an army of lions led by a sheep. He also talked about this concept that inch by inch is a cinch. And he said different people have different paces. So be sure that we're, we're respecting the paces of the others on our teams. The others around us, some people want to move a little faster, some people a little, little slower. So inch by inch, whatever the, the goal is, it becomes a cinch. Um, making people like you will just frustrate you and lead to reduced performance. <laughs> Not being a people pleaser uh, and really having the, the principle of who are you and what do we stand for and recognizing that we're a professional is really an important part of success in our industry. And if you're, if you're attempting to make all people happy at all times, you're probably, you're probably doing it wrong, unfortunately. Um, so those were some of the lessons that John Addison had that he shared with us. And I'm just going to share a couple more, and then, then I'll get to Mahas, and we'll kind of wrap the call up. Um, Don Yeager, who uh, recognized uh, or interviewed hundreds and hundreds of world-class athletes to really understand what made them tick, he said there's 17 characteristics of greatness. I just wanted to run through these with you guys because I think, I think you'll enjoy hearing these. I'm going to run through these kind of quickly. Uh, 16 characteristics of greatness, and this was from interviews with all of the very, very top people from, different, uh, from across different sports, um, football, baseball, golf, um, uh, tennis, uh, just all, all sorts of sports, that he, uh, sports people that he had the opportunity to interview. He said there's four things that, that define greatness. He said it's how they think, how they prepare, how they work, and how they live. And, and on how they think, he said it's, it's always personal. Uh, they hate to lose more than they love to win. He said it's about rubbing elbows. They understand the value of association. You have to believe. You have to have a faith in a higher power. And if you want to be great, you have to have contagious enthusiasm. You have to be a positive thinker. You have to be enthusiastic, and that enthusiasm will rub off down to the others around you. How they prepare, uh, great athletes hope for the best, but they prepare for all possibilities before they step onto the field. Uh, what off season? They're always working towards the next game. The goal is what's ahead, and there's always, always something ahead. They visualize victory. They see victory before the game begins, and they have inner fire. They use adversity as fuel. How they work, uh, ice in their veins is how they defined it. They are thoughtful risk takers and don't fear making mistakes. Love that one. When all else fails, they know how and when to adjust their game plan. So that made me think in our businesses, when we're behind on our goals, how and when do we, do we adjust? The ultimate teammate, they will assume whatever role is necessary for the team to win. And it's not just about the Benjamins. They don't just play for the money. They play for a higher purpose. Lastly, how they live. Commonly, their, their motto is do unto others. They know characters defined by how they treat those who cannot help them in return. When no one is watching, they're comfortable in the mirror. They live their life with integrity. When everyone is watching, they embrace the idea of being a role model. Records are made to be broken. They know their legacy isn't what they did on the field. They are well-rounded. And so there was, those were the 16 uh, lessons uh, that we had, the 16 characteristics of someone who achieved greatness in their life. So that, and that was Don Yeager. Um, one last quote that I had for you guys here, and let me just flip over. Um, he talked about, uh, he told some amazing stories of people who he had interviewed uh, over the years. And 
uh, he talked a lot about the fact that uh, one of the most common themes was that people had turned adversity into opportunity. And this was the, this was the message, and this is the, the closing message I'll leave you guys with tonight, is uh, uh, Don Yeager said, you cannot live a perfect day without doing something for someone who cannot repay you. So where in our day do we have an opportunity to do something for someone else that, that they cannot repay us? And that becomes the, the, uh, the, the hallmark of a, pers of a perfect day. So with that, uh, I just want to get a little bit of a sense of what, uh, what other ahas you guys had from this call. And I hope you, uh, you know, I certainly hope you guys found some value here tonight. So I'm going to unmute you guys and give you a chance to, to speak up and share the ahas you had. This is John. Boy, there's a lot of ahas here. <laughs> the uh, being a lighthouse, that's a fantastic being a lighthouse, integrity. There's, there's some about four pages of ahas, I think, there, Brian. That's, that's pretty awesome. Hey, I, I'm glad I'm glad you were able to take some good notes and, and take away some value. And I want to thank you guys for being on the call because this is – I know it's a – it, it takes a commitment to be here, and, and for those that did, you uh, you showed up, and I'm, I'm, I hope you had some value. Um, one or two other ahas, who else had something they took away from the call here? Brian, it's Jessica. Um, you know, it, we've talked about it a little bit in PC group coaching or even one-on-one, -on -one, and it, sometimes it comes off brutal, but I remember when I was at um, – Coach's Skills Camp and Tony DeSello was in our uh, mastermind. And, you know, we talk about, um, you, you mentioned waiting for circumstances um, means they'll never happen. You know, Tony DeSello put it very bluntly and said, you know, you wake up as agents every morning unemployed. And, you know, your job is to go out and, you know, get that paycheck. And if you're not coming home with that paycheck every day or, you know, in, in progress of that paycheck every day, then obviously you're failing, um, you know, as, your own CEO. Um, you know, you really have to look in at yourself and, you know, so, so many times people come from, you know, a different career where you have a CEO or a boss or a manager that, you know, is kind of looking over your shoulder all the time or holding you accountable. And it is such a different, um, it is such a, a, a hard transition. But um, I think when you talked about, so I was talking about waiting for circumstances uh, means it'll never happen. I think that leads really well into that um, prepare. So the thing, prepare, work, and live, you know, we all talk about, pre you know, we can prepare to prepare to prepare to prepare. But the best part of that is, you know, you got to hope for the best and, you know, but prepare for all scenarios. You don't hope for the best and pre prepare for the worst. We just have to train ourselves as, you know, CEOs or, you know, you know, whatever we're in, we have to understand that, you know, sometimes somebody's going to hang up the phone on you. Somebody's going to, you know, shut the door on your face. Um, but it's that positive attitude and understanding um, that value, you know, in the think part. So um, that was a really big aha for me is that think, prepare, work, and live. Love that. I love that. Yeah, failure, failure is not fatal. Awesome. Well, guys, I want to thank you for being on the call tonight. Uh, we will, I'm going to work with Jessica to get these scheduled on a regular basis so that we can add some additional value to you. Be sure to spread the message. I know if you haven't used the Zoom platform before, it's a new, it's a new place to be. Um, and I may, I may talk with Jess about doing these on Facebook Live, which might make it a little easier for you guys also to, to join in. So, um, Brian, I have one too. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, it's Delane. I had uh, the part where you said attitude and activity, activity are the only things we can control. Um, and you really shed some light that everyone has their bad days, no matter who you are. And if you think of um, the people uh, that you think – um, are doing so great in life, they probably are having the same struggles that we are. So changing your attitude and uh, following up with activity um, are really the only things that we can control, and that was really awesome. And seeing um, others as great, greater than they currently are, um, that was one too. So Awesome, awesome, awesome. Love those ahas, Delane. So fantastic. Well, with that, we are out of time. So I want to thank you guys for being here and uh, look forward to seeing you guys in the Market Center this week. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Brian.